Hey everyone, and welcome to another demo. Today I'll be talking about HCI Mesh, and in particular, what happens in an HCI Mesh scenario when you have an all parts down situation. For those who don't know, HCI Mesh is the situation where you as an administrator can now start mounting remote data stores. And this actually provides a lot of flexibility because when you provision a new virtual machine, you can now start consuming capacity that actually resides in a different cluster. So from a flexibility standpoint, when it comes to capacity management, it is a great solution. Not just that, when you have actually those data stores mounted across multiple clusters, you can now also vMotion, just do compute vMotion from one cluster to another cluster. So that also provides a lot of flexibility from that standpoint. But that's not what I'm going to talk about today. Today, what I'm going to be showing you what happens during the failure of a network of one of the hosts when it actually has a data store mounted. Now, in this particular case, I've already configured data store sharing. So on my cluster called Cormac, I have mounted the data store from Duncan's cluster. Now, this, when I've done this, it actually created a mount point to every single host within Cormac's cluster. And after I've done that, I've simply provisioned a virtual machine, which resides from a compute perspective on Cormax cluster, but of course, from a storage perspective on Duncan's cluster. Now, what I've done next to ensure that if anything happens from a networking standpoint that HA would actually take action is that I configured the APD response. So I actually went into the HA settings and then configured data store with APD to be set to power off and restart VMs. There are a couple of options here, right? Disable, issue events, and then there's power off and restart VMs, conservative and aggressive. The main difference being between conservative and aggressive is that conservative will only kill the virtual machines when it knows that the virtual machines can be restarted by another host in the cluster. The other thing that I want to point out is that there's a timeout value uh, mentioned here as well, or a timer value. By default, it takes three minutes before HA will restart the virtual machine after uh, it has detected the APD. And the APD detection can take up to a minute. So in total, it can take up to around four minutes before the virtual machine is killed and the virtual machine is restarted. Now, I've already had this configured and set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the Yellow Bricks virtual machine figure out which host it is running on. And then on that particular host, I'm going to switch off the vSAN network because that should trigger an all parts down scenario to the remote data store. Because at that point in time, the vSAN network is unavailable, which basically means that I can't access the data store in the remote cluster anymore. So I'm going to go to the VM kernel interface and I'm simply going to disable the vSAN uh, setting for that particular interface, which now disables the vSAN network traffic. After the vSAN network traffic disappears, what you will see is that a couple of alarms will start being triggered, not only on a host level, so you can see uh, 1503, 1504, 1502, all triggering these warnings, but on top of that, also on a cluster level, a warning is triggered. Um, after HA has recognized or realized that an APD scenario has occurred, what will happen is that the VM will go inaccessible. So yellow bricks will go inaccessible. And then after that, after it has been declared uh, that it is in a APD state, the VM will be killed by HA. And of course, it will also be restarted by HA. But as I mentioned, that can take up to roughly uh, four minutes. So right now you can see that the VM has gone into this inaccessible uh, mode and within a reasonable amount of time, that will actually change and you will see that the VM is being powered on again. It is being powered on on a different host in the cluster, of course, 1503 versus 1501 where it was running originally. And with that, we've reached the end of the demo. Hopefully you found it useful and I hope to see you next time.